Austin Carr does. First overall pick back in 71 out of Notre Dame. Played for the Cavs nine years, part of the broadcast team. He's been there for a while as well. Fox Sports Ohio. We've had him on before, but we've never had him on as a champion with his Cavaliers. And he's with us now on Tiki and Tierney. Austin, how are you today, buddy? Oh, doing fine now. I mean, it's kind of surreal, but it, it hasn't sink. I'm not quite feeling it yet because I've been 45 years waiting for this, but mm. it's just uh, it's a great feeling. And uh, we got about a thousand, at least about three, four thousand people already lined up waiting for the team to get in because I came in on the on the family plane. So uh, oh, okay. This, this is this is going to be uh, something that this area will remember will remember for quite a while. Did you go to Vegas as well? Because we know that the guys were partying. Did you head out to Vegas after the game? Uh, no, no, that was, only the team went to Vegas. I mean, mm. all the family members, you know, everybody's wives and children got on the plane we got on and came back here. Now we're waiting for them to get here. Yeah, no, this, we, this is huge, obviously, for the for, for the state of Ohio, but Cleveland in, in, in particular. And, and LeBron James is, is beyond words and definitions uh, what, what he was able to do. Obviously, this is what he promised. Um, a lot of the hate that's around LeBron may, may or may not go away, but internally – the appreciation for LeBron, what is it in Cleveland? Oh, it's, it's at its highest level. I mean, put it this way, if anybody's upset with LeBron now, then they, they, they have something wrong with him because, um, I mean, he, he delivered, he came back, he delivered, and uh, it only took him two years to do it. And it's just uh, it's just amazing um, what you see out here. I mean, it, this, well, at the airport now, when I first got in about – uh, 20 minutes ago, it, it's another thousand people have showed up. So it's <laughs> and the parade is starting. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday, and, and no telling what's going to happen. Last night at the game, they had to shut down all the streets coming into downtown because there was just too many people. Also, oh, you've been around the game a long time. Uh, you, as I said before, first overall pick back in '71. So your career as a player and as a broadcaster is encompassed basically the entire. It dates back to when the ABA was still playing. I mean, it's just amazing. Right. Exactly. Have you ever seen such a clutch, great, athletic, instinctual defensive play like LeBron made with a buck 45 to go, tied up at 89, chasing from 35 feet behind to rub Iguodala, pin him against the backboard? Yeah, that, that to me, uh, and we asked LeBron about that after the game, he said that to me, that will define his career. He said that is what he, he you know, he, 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 he thrives on, he lives on moments like that and he said that he was just happy that he was able to deliver because that really was the game right there and uh and how he did it i mean he did it about and about two or three other games uh, leading up to this game he did it to carry us several times but that play was uh that was the game right there i mean that by by stopping that play and then we came down and and, and, and got a basket that that really changed the whole complexion of the situation and uh i'll tell you I've seen been around a lot of players. I've played against a lot of players, but um, as far as cerebral understanding of the game and also understanding his teammates and, and what they can do and can't do, LeBron's one of the best. Ah, there's no question, no argument here. Austin Carr, a former Cav, and part of the broadcast team as well. Fox Sports Ohio with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Austin, we we know all of the drama that existed in Cleveland from LeBron's. Uh, exit to go to Miami to win the championships, the fight with Dan Gilbert, the the resurrection of the relationship and the forgiveness and bearing the hatchet and now winning the championship. Uh, but the one that everybody's talked about for most of this finals was the Kevin Love dynamic. What was it really like between Kevin Love and the rest of his teammates? Because we look at it and say something was off, but last night it didn't seem that way. He, he fell into a role that I think suited him perfectly for the for the environment for them to win a championship. Right. Well, that and then you read you read that perfect because that was what's been the, that has been the whole problem the whole season is trying to figure out how they all could exist together and stay out of each other's way, and um, and really that and, and and really I think a lot of it, uh, it had to do with with Kevin understanding um, that that you know just because you don't score doesn't mean you can't help your team, and he and once he got that in his head. He started doing other things, and he started, you know, you know, his defense even picked up because it, the pressure of scoring points was off of him. And uh, and and really, I mean, he had a great. He rebounded the ball well last night, and he got some some key, made some key defensive plays. I mean, 
he did things to make help us win, and now he's a world champion. But you're right. At first, it was like a, a, a nip and tuck as far as how they were going to fit in and, and not fit. And uh, and and it kind of we lost several games because of them trying to figure that out. Austin, would they would they have been able to win the championship if David Blatt coached this team for eighty two and and all the postseason? You know, when I think about it, I would say no. Uh, and the only reason I would say because Blatt knows the X and O's of the game. His problem was dealing with the players individually, and 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 I think that's where Lou excelled and and. You know, you could just see it. The players started um, getting behind Lou, and, and as opposed to they, they would almost rebel against uh, Black. And um, mm-hmm. and once Lou took over and, and started putting his little touch on things, things just seemed to, to go. And when LeBron endorsed it, that was it. I mean, everybody just bought in. And, and again, Lou knows what he's doing. Not only does he know, does know the X's and O's, but he also knows personalities, people. And and I think it was a defining moment in, in the in the season when there was a timeout going and, and, and LeBron was kind of um a little bit too voiceless, uh and, and Lou was trying to and he just told LeBron to shut up. And when that yeah. happened yeah. that whole that, that just changed everything just changed from that point moment on and, and even you know, LeBron himself, um it gave him the, the, the respect, and everything just changed. Yeah, we talked about that, and we, we definitely brought that up on the show. We're chatting with Austin Carr, Cavs the champs. I'm going to land in about an hour or so with Austin, first overall pick uh, back in 71, so he's a longtime Cav. He's part of the family, calls the games on TV for Fox Sports Ohio. You know, Austin, when you look at the uh, all the fans that are sitting there at the airport right now, we know that the, the team is going to land in an hour or so. You've been there for a little bit. What are they? Are you talking to them? What are they saying? What's the emotion? I mean, some of these people have probably been up all night. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They have been up all night. I mean, you can see some of them. They have on the same clothes they they they, they wore at the game. <laughs> Excuse me. I got a little bit of a cold here from uh, being out there in that condition. But um, you know, you you can just see that they are they're giddy because they they, they don't want to go to sleep. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, these people are. You know they're waiting on there. They got they got statues. They got uh, emo- they got all kind of things uh, bringing out. And uh, it, it's almost like when the, when the when the players get here, it's going to be an eruption. It's going to be just an explosion. I mean, when when now Tread McLeod and I, we just do the games. When we got out our car, they all jumped up like we played the game. It was <laughs> it was just unbelievable. <laughs> Hey, listen, Austin, appreciate a couple of minutes. Obviously, you've been bouncing around West Coast, different time zones, late flights, a little partying. Uh, really wanted to at least get it from you, you know, how the city's looking so far, how you thought and how you perceive and how you feel about this. Thanks for a couple of minutes. Go and revel. Go have a little bit of fun. And, and congrats to the city of Cleveland from us here at TQ and Tierney. Well done. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's always good to visit with you guys. Have Likewise. a good one.